was recently trawling through eBay looking at cameras and ended up buying a camera that I never thought I would own. That camera is the Diana F+. The Diana F camera was introduced in the 1960s from a company in Hong Kong, but was remade in 2007 by Lomography. It's an all-plastic camera from the body to the viewfinder that shoots a 6x6 image on a 120 roll film. The newer F Plus version that I have sports four apertures, cloudy, slightly cloudy, sunny and pinhole. These roughly correlate to F11, 16, 22 and 150. It also has two options for shutter speeds, at either a 60th of a second or bold mode. This lack of settings makes the camera very simple, but also very limiting. The reason I thought I would never own this camera is less about the camera, it's more what it symbolises. Lomography is a global brand that produces some incredible film stocks and are doing great things to keep film photography alive and thriving. But when it first started in 1992, it was a new movement of photography that started to embrace the lo-fi aesthetic of toy cameras. It's a style of photography full of light leaks, lens flares, vignetting, and a disregard for technical detail. This is something that never suited my style of shooting. I'm all for creative ways of manipulating film, but I've always struggled to get behind a camera that might not even work straight out of the box. Having used a few Lomography cameras, I find them frustrating, and I always feel like I'm fighting against them to get a good image. This particularly becomes a problem when you see the price. A brand new Diana F Plus, with all the accessories, is £200. For that, you can find a far better quality camera that won't break as soon as you put film in it. But this has always made me wonder. So when I found one for next to nothing on eBay, I decided to give it a go and see why it is that people are willing to pay that much money. I took it out with a couple of rolls of HP5 and shot over two days to get to grips with the camera. My expectations were very low for this camera. I was ready to potentially get no images at all and was almost certain the ones I would get wouldn't be worth anything to me. But I still tried to lean into the camera's possible strengths. I used exclusively the bulb mode and pinhole aperture and shot things like dead trees, large brutalist tower blocks and plants waving in the breeze all hoping that these abstract shapes and forms might become more interesting through the guise of a soft, distorted plastic lens. After just two rolls, I have been pleasantly surprised by some of the images, particularly the abstract nature of the dead trees. However, this is quickly offset by the amount of images that are ruined, by the soft, almost contrastless lens, by the fact that loading and unloading the camera requires the steady hands of a heart surgeon, the issues with frame spacing and film advancing, and it feels so light and plasticky that a stiff breeze might break it. At the end of the day, I won't be keeping this camera for long. And it became very clear that it's not for me, but that's not to say it isn't for anyone. If it comes along at a cheap price and you want something completely different to experiment with, then go ahead. Or maybe you love the unpredictability and inconsistency of toy cameras. Then I would say this one is probably one of the better Lomography cameras that I have tried. But personally for me, I'll be sticking to my Mamiya. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Give it a like and subscribe and let me know if you've ever used this camera and what you thought of it.